Hey, Alex again. I'm gonna toss this quickie up here because uh, I've gotten this question a few times with the Trinamics videos I had, and I just wanted to touch on it as a reference. So this isn't a big research video. This is all just off the dome. And then I'll toss some screenshots in there to help and put a few links in the uh, description. I apologize in advance for the lower quality. I'm in the middle of something else and I just got the bug in my head because of the questions online. I didn't mean, I'm just recording it with the FaceTime camera. So with my luck, this video will get 80 bajillion hits and everyone will be like, who is this guy who can't even record a video? But anyway. So here's the issue. People were asking about whining noise when they're using the Trinamic drivers in spread cycle. And while I haven't had that problem, it is a known problem for every stepper driver because they're designed to work into in a particular range and sometimes what you plug into that just isn't going to play nice but fear not because it could be a simple fix it could be a complicated fix but you can fix it and the frustration these people have is when they go check the interwebs for advice on the issues they'll get all kinds of different answers the reason for that is people are plugging all kinds of different gear into these and they're having all kinds of different problems. So there is no one size fits all answer, unfortunately. And while this does seem like a random shotgun approach, if you're not used to troubleshooting, there's hardly ever a one Sherlock Holmes answer to troubleshoot a problem. It usually tends to be a list that makes its way into a flow chart. So I'll try to make a virtual flow chart for you and work my way from the simplest or least expensive solutions or possible solutions, I should say, to either the most expensive or the most complicated. So that way, if you're working through it, hit the easy stuff first. Now, I should preface this by saying, Trinamic already knows about all these issues and they've given you solutions in their data sheets. These are not surprises and these are not bugs. These are just problems with the operating points and the hardware that you're plugging into it. Within their drivers, you can adjust to try to compensate for maybe suboptimal hardware, not bad hardware, just suboptimal for their particular drivers. So you can check in the description to the link and dig up that data sheet yourself. But if you're not used to speaking engineer ease, or if you don't know what the underlying mechanics behind what they're saying are, it might be a little difficult. So that's why I figured I would put out this video and try to give you all these things in common language and a little bit more organized than like a 50 page data sheet written partially in German. It's difficult to search because it's a PDF and Adobe hates us. So anyway, because I'm such a cool guy, I put an index in the description of this video. So that way you can skip over sections that you've already tried, or you can skip two sections that you're more interested in and listen to them again. Now we return you to your regularly scheduled PSA. Four major areas. Number one, construction. Number two, components. Number three, operating conditions. And number four, software settings. So under the construction setting, you see I left a big area here because I'm put, gonna put some bullet points down. You want to know if there's intermodulation between the wiring and connections for your motor. You see your steppers have a signal that's going to drive the two coils on our bipolar steppers. And those are different signals from each other. So for them to work best, they have to be able to separate as, as best as possible into their respective frequencies that are fed by the pulse width modulator. D don't worry, I'll, I'll try to keep the nerd terms to a minimum. But pulse wave modulator, you'll find it as PWM. So obviously PWM, the M in modulate is the modulation. So we want this to be modulated, not cross modulated or intermodulated, because then you take the peaks and the troughs and you get constructive and destructive interference and it messes with your signal. So if those lines are laid out poorly on a PCB or the connectors bleed or your wiring is a rat's nest, you can run into intermodulation issues. It's not common, but it can happen. So it's worth checking for and it's free. If you don't find anything, you're probably cool which means make sure your wiring itself isn't a rat's nest. And if you're using like a six foot long connector wire that you have bundled up with all your other connector wires and tied together with zip ties and stuffed under your bed, not that my printers look like that or anything, but that could be contributing to the issue. And the same thing goes for your steppers. Check and see if it's a known issue because while it's easy for people to just chalk something up to a bad stepper and say, take your broke ass down to robo dig and buy a better stepper, that might not necessarily be the solution. You could buy a much more expensive, better stepper that has issues as well, but it also could just be a bad stepper because they're really just a stator and rotor and coils of wire, which can all interact in bizarre ways, depending on how you plug it in. Or you could just have some wraps that aren't 
particularly tight or potted. I don't think they pot stepper wires. I think it's probably double thick insulation that they run a current through that melts them. But regardless, if you have a loose wrap, you could get a mechanical resonance that's um, exacerbated by your electronic pulses. Much like if you have a power transformer that has either a, a lamination that's come loose or some bad turns, you can get a mechanical resonance from that and it'll buzz. If you've ever had a crappy electrical transformer outside and you've heard it buzzing from like a block and a half away, there you go. Now the next freebie thing to check is make sure your ground connections are all solid. With these drivers, a lot of things are referenced to ground. So if you have a bad ground, which means your ground is modulating or intermittent, you're gonna have erratic behavior. And again, that could just be a poorly designed board or it could be a bad connector. Doesn't hurt to just go check all that. Now, obviously you're using something like a ramps and Arduino setup. There's not too much you could do about those connectors, but it doesn't hurt to pull it out and reseat it. Okay, next thing is a component selection. And we'll talk specifically about the steppers. These drivers are meant to work within a range and they can with greater or less success, depending on how close you are to the happy medium. If you've watched my other videos on torque and frequency and whatnot, or if you've messed around with the torque spreadsheet that I posted, you know, the main parameters that we're going to be interested in are the stepper current, the voltage and the inductance. So if you could pull up the data sheet for your steppers and just look at the phase inductions and make sure it's not too high. Higher inductance is higher time constant. We ideally want these frequencies to be up out of the audible range. So double check that and make sure it's at least in a single digits somewhere. And by single digits, I mean like two, three, four, five, six millihenries, not 29, 30, 40 millihenries. Those types of steppers can work too, but eh, they're pretty sketchy and you're not gonna get a lot of torque at higher speeds. So if you're in that single digit range or low teens range, you're probably all right. Another thing is make sure your stepper isn't meant to be driven at too low or too high a current because that means you're out of its optimal range. That's why you might see somebody online that says, I raised the current to my stepper and wine went away. Or somebody else might say, I lowered the current to my stepper and the wine went away. And if that doesn't happen to fall within the optimal range of like 75 to 90% or so of your stepper's rated phase current, then you, you can run into some issues depending on what your inductance is and your operating headroom. As long as your stepper's rated current is around an amp, you're okay. And then you can just tweak your current up and down accordingly. But if you have for some reason like a 500 milliamp stepper, you're gonna have to be running that at like 400 milliamps, which is a bit on the anemic side. Or if you have like a two and a half amp stepper, you can't crank that much juice out of these trinamic dryers before they get too hot. But that's probably not optimal either. Also, you'll see the minimum drive voltage on the data sheets. Make sure that isn't too high because every volt that you lose in your windings is a volt that you're losing in your headroom. So particularly if you're trying to run at 12 volts, if you're losing, you know, five, six volts in your stepper and voltage drop in, in the electronics and the driver itself. You don't have a whole lot of headroom to work with. You're probably gonna end up lowering your chopper frequency and you're definitely gonna get wine. So if you have a high operating voltage on your data sheet, that, that might tell you or be indicative of one reason that it might be. And finally, check your stepper mounts and your belts. It's a long shot, but it's very possible that you get the coils making a mechanical resonance and you get audible wine. Like I said, it's a long shot, but weirder things happen. Now, you may have heard people say that if you raise your operating voltage, that'll make your wine go away. It's very possible. Like I said, you need sufficient headroom for your drivers to work properly, and it's more or less important depending on what steppers you use. So it couldn't hurt to dry po try popping the voltage up. I always recommend it running a higher voltage anyway. 12 is not good. It was just sort of a compromise for the early RepRot project because we all had ATX supplies lying around and lower voltage capacitors and things like that tend to be cheaper. But as a general rule, it's always better to go higher. You can look up something like 24 volt conversion if you want, but you don't necessarily have to do that permanently. If you have basic electronic skills and you don't feel like buying like a 24 volt supply just to test this theory out, look for something a laptop supply like a higher amperage laptop supply. If you have one lying around, that's cool. If you don't, check for like a, uh, an old LCD monitor supply or go to a thrift store or something like that and rummage around their electronic bins and see if you can grab one for a couple bucks. Use a meter to identify whether the tip or the ring is positive versus negative and then temporarily wire that into your ramps board or whatever your control board is. Now just to touch on how you do 
the RAMP's Arduino 24 volt conversion, you're going to want to find your D1 diode or whichever diode it's designated on your board should be D1 that backfeeds that power into your Mega, your Arduino Mega and remove that or desolder one leg at least temporarily because you don't want to feed 19, 24, 32 volts into your Arduino, which is then going to be feeding your logic and your LCD and your SD card reader and all that stuff because you're going to blow out the incredibly crappy regulator on the Arduino. I'll probably make a video ranting about the poorly designed power on that board, but I won't get into it right now. Suffice to say, dropping that much voltage across a tiny little 1117 regulator is gonna pop it and very possibly toast your Arduino because of the complete lack of fail safes. And that means you're going to have to feed your Arduino separately than your ramps board. An easy way to do it for the temporary thing is to use a powered USB hub and just power it through the USB jack on the Arduino. And then as long as that diode's out, you can feed whatever voltage you need to into your ramps board and test for wine at a higher voltage. You don't have to run prints and anything like that. Obviously, you just have to plug it in and maybe you can jog the axis a little bit with the LCD. Just make sure your board is 24 volt compatible, i.e. the capacitors are high enough value, your polyfuses are high enough value, etc. And don't plug in the bed or the hot ends or any of that stuff. If you're just testing, just leave those disconnected so you don't have to worry about sucking too much current through. And that frees you up from having to worry about the bed's polyfuses voltage rating, which is usually 16 because board manufacturers hate us. And a final warning, when you're doing that higher voltage ramps conversion and you're using Trinamic chips, they warn us in the data sheets that you should not have your Arduino Mega powered up while your ramps board is powered down. Because for some reason, the way that their reference voltages work, if you're not feeding high voltage, but you are feeding logic voltage, you could blow out part of your driver boards. I've given this warning before, and they have diode protection boards that are supposed to help against things like that. I have personally not blown out a driver that way, but according to Trinamic, it can happen. So why mess around with it? Easiest way to deal with that is take your 24 volt supply or 18 volt supply or whatever, and your powered USB hub supply, plug them both into the same power strip and then just have them both in the on state. So just use the power strip on and off to power up your ramps and your Arduino simultaneously and power them down simultaneously. And if you're going to be programming your Arduino via USB through your computer, make sure you have your high voltage on as well. Now, on to the last section, which is dirty stinking software hacks. Now they're not really hacks, but it feels kind of hacky because everything's kind of hidden. Now remember before I mentioned your chopper's PWM frequency and all that? Typically these manufacturers try to set that out of the human hearing range, which is more or less 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, but there are certain things that can affect that chopper frequency either automatically or inadvertently and drop it down into the hearing range. And that's the problem that we are having. So again, if your stepper's inductance is too high, it can do that if your headroom, your operating voltage is too low. And there's settings in a firmware that affect your operating point, which affects that frequency. Now you can't set the frequency itself independently of other parameters, but there are two in particular and then kind of a tertiary that you can mess around with. Now, before I tell you what those are, let me tell you where you can find this nonsense. The, the lady or fellow or whatever that upkeeps the Trinamic driver section of the Marlin firmware is right here and the link is down below. And then there's also the reference of the Trinamic data sheet there and below. And you can hear all about this there. Now, what you're looking for is your tee off time your blanking time or blank time, however they prefer to say it, and your hysteresis. Now, lowering those is going to bring our pulses closer together, effectively raising the frequency, but they're interdependent on each other, so you can't just go drop everything to zero willy-nilly, which is why this is kind of in the last section, the advanced section. You can either go into the library and change the defaults, or go into your configuration advanced settings and add it as a function like an init function. So at startup, it's going to set those registers and you're on your way. 
I'm not sure if that's something you can do in Gcode. I'm pretty sure not. So you may have to try this, flash your firmware, try another setting, flash your firmware, etc. And I, I don't think there's any way you can hurt your drivers trying these various settings. They just, if you're out of range, it just might go bleh, and you'll get either nothing or it'll just default to whatever it thinks is cool and it won't have the desired effect. And again, all of those ranges and parameters are in the Trinomic data sheets. I'm gonna give a link to the 2130, but the 228 is the same way. And they have, believe it or not, a whole bunch of other stepper drivers that we just don't talk about because they don't happen to be on in the stepstick format, but you can find those data sheets as well. And just as a final note to wrap it up, all these libraries and the Marlin firmware and all that, the, these aren't companies that make money. These are people, these are people just like me, just like some of you out there, that take on different areas of the software as their pet projects. And then the community does testing and they just do it for the good of everyone. Now you might say like, I'm not a programmer. I don't know how to do that. Well, you can help out by troubleshooting your particular board and then posting your solution somewhere in the community. And the more details you give, the better. So if, for instance, you're converting a, uh, a Tron XY X1 to silent step sticks and you had that buzzing problem and you say, oh, I see what the problem was. Like these motors didn't have a whole lot of headroom and they had high inductance. So I went from 12 to 24 and they worked fine. Or, oh, these were particularly high current drivers. So as soon as I raised it to XYZ level, wine went away, you know, that type of thing. That's extremely useful for the community as well. And if you're wondering about how inductance and voltage headroom 12 versus 24 and all that stuff contributes to the function of the kinematics part of your printer, check out my other videos relating to torque testing and that sort of stuff. It might help shed some light on it or it might confuse you more. I try to keep the techno babble out of this as much as I possibly can. If you need further clarification, just hit me up in the comments and I'll try to get back to you when I, when I have time. All right, that's it for now. Thanks a lot. We'll catch you in the next video.